the top number is what's left to be dried and the bottom number is what's been dried higher I thought uh, I thought I'd give you a quick look around It's a little bit blowy up here but we're at a, well we're in a real real location in the UK you can actually find if you um, there will be some landmarks there's a a pub um, down the road I say down the road it's a long way that way um, you can actually find that you can actually Google and find that this is actually a real lo real location based on this map is based on a real location um, I just I just love this map it's, I just I really do I've spent nearly a thousand hours just on this one map and for me it's home I just found it and never I mean yes I do the other one on 22 this is on 19 but the layout everything I know it's based on real so which gives it an extra feel to the place but it's everything about it it's like it's winter time now and I mean you're probably thinking it's like well it's a bit dark but that's how it is because it's winter and you can tell by over there with the sun there's no brightness in you know no strength in that sun at all simply because it's winter when summer comes you I couldn't stand here and look at the sun like that it would be blind me out I'm not going to do much today I'm just going to have a walk around it just a bit of an intro really into the into the farm which only hopefully I don't take too long I nearly got through all this. This is um, sugar beet, as you can see. It's quite still quite a bit here. Last autumn we must have harvested upwards of 500 tons, if not more. It was this well. I banked it up this high here, like it is here, and this was this went all the way back. Oh, it, it didn't end to about here somewhere. About here. Somewhere like that. So it cleared out nearly half. There's uh, two... F Let me make sure I got this right. Yeah, there's two farms. <coughs> this is um, what I call home farm. And... Uh, Oh, here's a fertilizer shed. Oh, actually, is that lime? It is, isn't it? No, it's not. It's fertilizer. Yeah, I got fertilizer here. All lined up, ready. Fertilizer comes from Poland. This is crop fertilizer. So this is fertilizer I would use when... Um, when we're planting the blue bags is more ni more like um, nitrogen so that's for grass they still got to be emptied there that's uh, spud sheds that is But this up here, well, here on this map, this this is proper, um, what I call like, if there is such a thing, proper, like I call it proper farming. We do a little bit of production, simply because we want to, you know, and see they're all full. I'm saying that, I think the middle one is the fullest, most of these end ones are empty. 
but the fields up here I mean the land is just for me I mean I have farmed in my life been, started farming when I was 10 years old bit of a dumping bit of a dumping ground up there for the some of the machinery mainly trainers end up here in the in the old orchard there ain't much left of it now there's a pond there in the middle and a few trailers there usually the trailers end up here we got upwards of a thousand acres I think we must have all the seeds are in here ready for the spring still got more to come we've got fertilizer there that's got to come out <coughs> still got load, loads of that to come just bought a new muck spreader over there but the fields here are big they are big averaging anywhere from well I suppose the average field is probably 10 to 13 acres 10 to 14 ranging from there and some of the big ones over right over there where you can see is on the horizon that row of trees that's our land over there as well and most of those fields over there are anywhere from 15 15 to 30 acres we've got canola in here this snow it snowed about two months where well, we we're on midwinter and just as we hit midwinter we're on f the fourth 14th day of midwinter but on day one it started to snow and it hasn't stopped I think we had two days heavy snow and this is what the result is and it hasn't gone away it stayed here now it's been here for 14 days and I'm on real time so the clock goes quite slow and I'm on 24 day seasons so it's eight days in a month got it like that because I, I mean I just love I love farming and I love love everything about it and I didn't want to p make it any shorter rushing around I don't want to end up rushing around I just want to I mean I'm busy I am really really busy never never a dull moment here there's always something to do the reason why we're doing beats and we're doing well spuds Spuds get hauled out and just sent off to the wholesaler or merchant and then they do what they do with them but the beets um, yeah we've got a little production area where we make um, molasses and a bit of refined sugar it's only a small little place probably no bigger than that shed there which never gets used um she's like the corn i mean I, I still got quite a bit there to dry we, we sell the dry corn we get extra we get get paid um premium for that but uh it's a nice little plant that is but we must have grown up with what 100 150 200 acres of corn Yeah, it was it now four, four o'clock in the afternoon? Goes a long way that way, right the other side of. The, I think from here to those row of trees on the horizon, that's halfway. And then we've got another ha half of the map, the other side of those. So, from you can't see. You see something red, but that's not it. But beyond the red, there's a row of. A, trees and you probably can't see them that's the beginning of the land and then up there where those road trees is that's halfway I just go going there's the house there's the house 
We ain't got no sheep in here, but it's all set up ready for sheep. But we're going to keep a few rams in here. It's quite a big field. But it's nothing like what's down the bottom. This is small. This is a small field. I got a field down the bottom that we just, just purchased. Um, it can hold nearly 500. Well, probably two, three hundred. No, more than that. I'd say anywhere from 300 to 500 sheep. It's nearly a 50 acres. If we go on the right calculations, four sheep to the acre. So that's 200. So I'll probably get two or three hundred sheep down there then. Because that's what they estimate. They estimate about four sheep to the acre, one cow to the acre. One cow to the acre and four sheep to the acre. But if it's it's good 50 acres, if not more, it, it's huge. It's huge, I can't. It's probably from where I'm standing, The fit one, that one field, it's probably all this field here and that next one over that's covered in snow. Because that's the size of one field. Maybe a little bit of exaggeration. That's still going, that's still cooking away. Next time you see me after this little, little intro, I'll um, we'll get down to do some work, because we're always busy here. I mean, it, I'm always behind. I never I never catch up completely, which is a proper way to farm. Farmers are always behind. Never enough hours in the day, never enough days in, days in a week. Right, let's just going to pop over to the other other place. So I sort of call this my place, because this is this is a the latest place we bought. Well, that's what I'm saying anyway. So I say this is my place, and where it all started is over there. All right. Yeah, sorry, it's a bit dark. I should have recorded this earlier on in the day. The sun is so low in the sky. But this is where it all started, up here. It's what we call home farm. No, this is, sorry, got that wrong. This is what we call top farm. We've got Yorkshire Moors there, or part of Yorkshire there. I don't say the Yorkshire Moors. What's that yellow? Oh, fence. Yeah, there's part of Yorkshire. This is where we're to in England, is it? In the UK, we're in Yorkshire. God, I should have, that sun's dropping in it. Can't see the fields over there, should have done this earlier. It's bleak up here though. Gonna probably, we're, I'm thinking of um, putting up some pens in there. One or two. I'm thinking of doing some sheep, that's all. I don't know if that's gonna be a good thing or a bad thing. Not a lot happens here, on this farm. Got some holiday cottages down there. It's an old farm, this is. It's not underneath the snow, it's all rubble and dirt. It's not much. There's sheds in here that we don't use. Don't think you've even driven a tractor in here. These are all empty. A handy storage. But the other part down here, we uh, there's an old mower there. Old finger mower. Probably horse drawn, and then converted to a tractor. So that looks like old lathe, Jenny. Ah, new bucket there, and never been used. The other place is a bit where we've got the beets. I say the beet beet production is only like a shed about. Well, it's not that big. It's probably that big. That's all. 
But beets don't make a lot of money. That's the thing. We had to think of something. They don't. They don't turn around a profit for it. Well, they, uh, barely beat a prof profit. So we had to come up with some idea. <laughs> the main use, or the main reason for growing them, is like you might be asking, well, why grow them if they're not worth much? It's crop rotation. Don't grow a lot of root vegetables around here, which mainly all cereal. It's all cereal. So we can actually move well, well away. I don't want to, I didn't want to do um I didn't want to do um all potatoes. I mean they, I don't know I mean work price say it but they're they much much better. They ain't much better. Here's my pride and joy down here. No, not the shed. We got all. Oh, you didn't see the track. We got fent. We got a fent tractor. One at the moment. Um, we got a class. Don't know where that one's to now. Got a class. Got old Fiat. Um. JCB, quite a big one. It's got that's one. That one's got four hundred and um. Yeah, I didn't show you. Oh, it was up the top yard. I didn't really show you the machinery. There we got um. Oh, I can't spit it out now. Got an import from America. Can't remember now. Yeah, this is my pride and joy. Ten T. No steering wheel. Have a quick jump in. No steering wheel. So no, nice to drive. That's the foot pedals down there, just having to rest my feet. Got a little joystick here on the left to to steer it. But uh, there, yeah, that's my pride and joy. My T10, 10T. Spent hours in that one. I should have closed that out. I don't know why that's too no. Oh. Doing some servicing when I remember now. I'm trying to think, why is why is it out? It shouldn't be out. Oh, I was just doing some. Sh belong, this is this is a shed it belongs in. This one. I have to put it back in there. I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. Um, yeah, that's it. This is that yard. This is what it is. Oh, we didn't. Um, let's have a quick run round here a minute. I keep missing out the machinery. Showing you, I've got another trailer. Another trailer in there. <coughs> Those trailers. How it works on the on this place is that I got two of these, and they're grain trailers. And then I've got. Two, I can't remember the make now. They look, well, they're a bit taller than that, and they're black. And they're used for, for the beets. And then I got special trailers for the potatoes. Yeah, I got a bit of machinery here, not much. But I got a topper there. And spring tines, springtime cultivator. No spud machine. Actually, I'm surprised. I, I cleaned that off before I put it away. It's, it's a bit unlike me. Right. Let's have a look here a minute. That's my run around, that is. That's my run around.
Yeah, I ain't got too much. I'm trying to think where everything's too. Yeah, I got discs there. They're light discs. When we prep ground here, we I do it like the way I would normally do it. Well, my way of doing it is like, you know, we'll prep it two or three times before we'll actually sow seed. There's no shortcuts here. You know, if I'm going to say, say you had a field of stubble, I wouldn't just um, say, yeah, I could, because the ground here is quite dry, because we're high up, so I could uh, disc that for, say, three, well, two or three inches, but I wouldn't just disc it, then plant it, Not, I mean, I would, um, I wouldn't use them, they're light ones, they would be ones I would, say I, well, yeah, say I disced it after stubble, and then I'll probably just get that I'll probably use them up there, which are chain arrow. They're drags up there. Well, I call them drags. I think this is the drags. Was this the springs? No, this is the springs. Another spring time. Harrow there. That's a, that's a light one. I've got a heavy one there. Or heavier one there. Yeah, that's the one I would use. That's that's that that one there. There's no getting through any hedges here. That they're, they're like I can jump jump over if I can. No, I can't. Hedges are solid here. You can't afford to hit a hedge here. It's solid. Yeah, those ones there. They got spring tines, but they got little shoes on the on them on the tines. So you disc it, then I would use that, then I would plant. Usually I, I work the ground two or three times before I, I plant seed. I don't do any shortcuts. Now show, I had a look in there. And I got the new, like I said, new muck spreader there. Um, tractor I was talking about is in there. I haven't used it yet. I only came a couple of weeks ago, workshop in here. Um, just trying to think what other, now we've got to pick up some more cold invaders, there's a really heavy, didn't pick it up, oh yes I did, it's down the field, we do do the traditional ploughing every so often, but we have got a machine, and it's not the easiest machine, I don't know if we're going to keep it. It's six meters wide, but it won't fold. It doesn't fold. It's solid. And I don't I see what problems it causes, if any. Well, it's going to cause problems somewhere. Because it's wider than the road. And I can't fold it. Here's the tractor. Now, uh, versatile, that's what I was after. You may be thinking, why have I gone and got a thing like that for? I could have had a um, case. Case, class, case, case. Well, one, it was cheaper. Secondly, the size. It's six, that one there is 650 horses. So this is our monster machine, you know, for doing the steeper ground. I should have showed you that as well. And, um, but it, like, when I stand at the back, it's not very tall it's not very big it's not and I don't think it's so wide as a case as well if you look at the back it's not so wide so I can get a lot of horses in a sort of smaller machine but still have the have the oomph because around here if you see a piece of machinery and, it, and you go to buy it and it says um, oh you need 200 horses you know, 200 horsepower to um, to operate it, but well, that's based mainly on flat ground because you can't calculate s slope ground. So 
If something says, oh, it needs 200 horse, horsepower to, to operate that machine, most, you know, the best part of that calculation is worked out on ground like that, like this. Flat ground. And we got some ground over there. You can't see from here. No, you can. It's like this. Is that fed? Um, it's like that one. The vent would pull that, but it wouldn't. It wouldn't be able to budge that on some of the ground that we've got over the other side. We just. You'd go down alright, but you wouldn't come up. There's just no way. I've come back over this side again. Now, now I'm back on top farm. You can see where the home farm is, right there in front of me. On the. Well, not on the horizon, but up over the top of that snowy field. There's something shiny. That's the dryer. And you can see the wind turbine turning. This is what I'm talking about, steep. And, it, and it, I don't know if the snow's making it not so steep as what it is. This is what I call steep here. That side of the valley ain't so steep. They're more, that's, you can't see it from here, but I mean, that one there right in front of me, behind those trees, there's a bit of a slope in that one. And then as they go down there toward the villages, right down the bottom there, can't see the village but it's right down there as far as you can s as far as the snow goes and then there's about six fields the other side of this that last snow you can see and then there's the village and then it sort of starts to level out down there but even the village is on a s built on a slope or a bit of a hill but you can see those um electrical lines how they you know from the bottom up to the top you can see how they go up quite quick so it's still there but this side of the valley oh especially I mean that's steep here and you can see across it's, and this is like this all the way through the valley I mean there's the next field there so you've got to double up so if something says it needs 200 horses to, to pull it here you've got to I mean you can see how steep that is you can go across the field. You can go across the field. Sometimes it is probably better to work across than it is up and down. But if something says it needs 200 horse horsepower to to operate that machine here, you've got to say right, that's 200 horses plus an extra spare, so I need 400. Just to be sure. <coughs> I mean that fence. I mean this. This whole field here was, um, oh, it was soil bean. Last, the last harvest was soil bean in this field. And this field is 20, 22 acres. The next one over is even bigger. That's nearly 30 acres. So you've got this one, that one, and the third one over. And that's, and you've got 100 acres. And we've got all these fields that you can see. Everything that's covered in snow is all our land, all through there, all the way down through there. And not, but, yeah. And down through here, and the other side of the road as well. You might think, well, why have I got so much? Um, may need to keep busy. Or rather be busy and over busy. So a lot of times things don't get done because there's just too much to do sort of represents sort of in a way the, the real way of farming we you know farmers worked 14 16 hours a day sometimes even more especially through spring and the harvest and that's why I, I and also I want to justify um, bringing in NPCs because as you saw when I am um, if I jump in this vent No, it's not coming up now. Why isn't that coming up? Like a, oh, well, if I do that. We work a lot of course play. And we also work a lot of... Um, auto drive. And I know some people say, oh... <coughs> if you 
if you you know it's a smaller farm you wouldn't need all that but to be honest I love it because you know you can imagine I mean there's no I mean uh, I can't show you now but you will see later there's like there's no pop-up there's no pop pop-ups on this map and if I had a tractor if I was in this field here say I was working this one or planting this one whatever I was doing and that field across the valley there if there was a tractor in there working until like three quarters way up that field you would see that tractor you don't have to be right next to it for to be able to see it and that's what I love I'll have a tractor in that one in front of me working that could be cultivating I might have one in there that's rolling one over there usually there's three of us well with me there's four usually I have upwards of three NPCs through the summer so casual staff through the summer is usually three and usually in the winter there's just two of us me and somebody else but you know it's like these top fields you know feels a bit lonely you know otherwise I mean I could be working these top fields or I could be up the top of that field working and then all of a sudden there's a tractor going down the road you know full of corn or whatever it just brings the whole place to life so I wanted a big farm so I could work big enough to keep me busy some fields have to lie empty but normally we get it all done it's just a bit of a depending on the weather <coughs> we are governed you know like in the real world we're governed by the weather if the weather turns sour on us that's it you know we could end up not planting a field we're not planting two fields if we get caught out or we plant really late and then we we'll, or we just have to sacrifice it and put down some uh, also all seed radish to the screaming nerve plant it out later or something so we you know it operates so much like the real world and like I said there's no you know there's nothing here to sort of like pop-ups or anything like that and the tractors when people you know when the NPCs are working tractors you can see them a long way off a long way off especially when we were hauling grain from the field all the fields are all set up so all I've got to do is jump in the combine I can sit there all day long and I've got NPCs coming you know casual workers coming to um, to collect the grain makes you feel like you're in the real world And I, I mean, I, I have no, I mean, 19, you know, farming sim, 19, farming sim, 20, 17, whatever. I don't, I don't play it because of the numbers. I play whatever I play because what it can offer. So I'm on 19 because I, can, I, I, I got this map. I, you know, that's the reason why I play it. It offers me, you know, chance. I said I've been on this map for a thousand hours and I will never leave this on 19 hours I, I should never leave this map what's the point I could leave this map and go to another farm but it's still dirt still a field just a slightly different but here the way it's laid out there's hardly the it's like you know I feel like I'm in the real, real world because there's hardly any farms around here this spread out well I think there's one so we got we're on one here and there's one across the valley and I can drive like cool, quite a way oh three four fields that way and there's a little tiny hamlet you can't see it but even though you know I mean that way if you drove down there and then turned left oh you could in real time you could drive 10 minutes before you saw a house takes half an hour if I uh, bring up the map on my tablet uh, that, that one I scroll out I show you all this now because I am going to make a series of this and it just gives you a little bit of insight and you know 
and the the layout is perfect. Everything's a one-way system here. Not not really, but I've made it a one-way system. So that there is is. I hope I've got my mouse switched on. If I haven't, at the top of the map where it was an orange square, and it says ten and eleven. That's what I call home farm. Come to the mid, sort of in the middle. And it's 51, 52, and 53. And there's a blue square. That's where we're at the moment. That's top farm. But if you look at the roads at um, 10 and 11, it goes down to the right to where it says 38, 39, 40. That's the, that's the village. And practically, that's the only village, proper village. And that's quite small and sparse. There's grain merchants there. There's the farm shop there. Um, but if you look at the road, the way it goes down to the village, then it comes down to 46, so you're coming down, to, and then it comes down to 65, little tiny field there in the corner, 66, so it comes back up then towards where we are, so it's like a complete circuit, so I've got, I operate that as a one-way system. And then if you go back to 66, 65, so I'm on the right-hand side of the map, where it says 63, 64, and that area. If you come up that road, there's a green square. Now that green square, there's a road that goes down, and you work your way down to that red uh, red mark. But just before you get there, there's a turning to the well. If you're if you're coming down the road, is a turning to the right. If you turn there, but on the map, it's turning to the left. If you go down that road, well, no, I missed that road. Sorry, I go to the next one down. And I turn that right there, and then I go all the way along there, and then it comes back up again. So I I operate the whole map as a one-way system. So the tractors will come out of if if tractors want if tractors wanted to go to 51 or 52 or 53, not me, but the other people, they would they would have to come out of that top the home farm, the orange square. And then they would turn, looking at the map, they would turn right. They would go down there to 20. There's a bit of a crossroads there at 20. Now they turn right again, or come down the map, 41, 42. They come down that road, come down to 65, 66. They come there, and then they would turn off left. At the map, they turn left, where it says 82, 83, 88, 81, and 84. I turn left there and come up that road to that where I'm flashing there on the map. That's the only way they can get to it. And it's the same if they're hauling grain from 54. It stops any mess ups, any collisions. If they're hauling grain from 54, then they would go up the they'd come out the field. On the map, they would turn left and go all the way around till they get to 10 and 11. There's grain bins that. Where I'm flashing, and of course there's two lots of grain bins at the 10 and 11, but that's the only ones we've got. But you can see all the the green numbers, all the land that we own. That's nearly a thousand acres. The whole map, if it was said, he said, the developer, the one that made the map. If you calculate all the field, all the acreage of all the fields on this map, it comes out to nearly 3,000 acres. Well, I'm sorry if I bored the Jesus off of you. I can say bored the pants off you, but uh, yeah. But I thought, well, I'm going to make a series. Well, I mean, I'm here all the time, and I keep thinking, well, if I'm here all the time, I might as well do some recording. This is my sort of chill out space. I like to come here. I just, you know, I've got nothing else to do. I just come here on the farm. And I work it like I'm really here. I don't really play. I don't really play the, you know, play the map. But I sort of live the map, you know. I, I, that's how I, I, I work. It's not so much like, I can say like role play. It's not so much like role play in a way. It is. It is in one way and isn't another. 
it's not like you know not like that it's just me farming and it's like me doing a doing a blog <laughs> that's what it's like I suppose I don't know I don't know how else to say it I'm just you're gonna see me here working and I'm just gonna be talking to the camera and that's it just like I'm doing a blog but like I say I put a thousand hours into the, I've, into this map and I was thinking, well, I'm here, I'm here most, you know, pop in. I just pop in and have a, you know, have a mess around. But it's not so much mess around. I really feel like, you know, like, oh, this has got to be done. That's got to be done. But like I say, we don't do any shortcuts. I don't, I don't, um, it's not all about rushing and making so much money as I possibly can. I mean, like, like I said, I've done a thousand hours and what we got, two and a half million. You know, as so long as I've got money to put bread on the table, sort of thing, that's, that's what I worry about. It's not like rushing around. Because, I mean, that says two and a half million, but that's going to go down to using nearly a million of that. Not far off. Time we bought more seed for the spring. Time we paid for all the f diesel for the spring when, the, when we're planting. And we got all the seed to plant. We, we still got loads of uh, potato seed to buy. We got beet seeds to buy. We lose a million, nearly a million of that. Bound to. Well, I wouldn't say bound to. I'm going to be interested to see how far that does go down. But it does go, it does drop in after we've finished planting. We've got, if we've got a, say we had 800 acres. Um, we're looking at four, two, so we've probably got 200 acres planted, I would say. We got caught out because we were harvesting, um, corn and the weather turned sour we had we had somebody planting and we were going to drop back on planting and then the weather turned sour so we couldn't plant we just managed to finish harvest and then that was I think that was rain and then I woke up in the morning and then it was this rain turned to snow overnight and it came in quite thick but we managed to get it all we, we got all the harvest in but we didn't get all the planting done I would have liked to plant another 50 acres 100 acres but it never happened so that was a bit stressy that was so we so spring's gonna be we got an extra 100 acres we've got grass up the top new field of grass so I don't know what we're gonna do there might be um well we're gonna do I want to go I'm gonna cut some for hay because I don't know if we're going to keep sheep or not. I don't know. If I get sheep, then I'll have to have two people working in the winter. And the main reason what they do in the winter is, is hauling grain. Hauling grain. I just emptied one bin. Well, there was more than one. There was two or three bins. But there's one bin on the home farm. I just em finished emptying that. That, that had 500,000 um liters of wheat in but that was only like quarter what half a, half the crop quarter of the crop i think it was only half um i think we grew over a million and a quarter liters of wheat and then that's the same for everything we had nearly a million liters of corn so winter time they do a lot of hauling down to the down to the um, grain merchant. That's mainly their job in the winter. There's no groundwork. And I, and I, I do a lot of hauling, hauling and running around, buying, you know, unloading seed, getting fertilizer for the spring. Well, I, I'm going to shut shut up because I could be yapping yapping all day. 
but I just give you a little bit of an insight, you know, of the, of the place. You know, so when you, if you see me, I can't see why not. When I say that, I'm here, so I might as well record myself. So, you know, you're going to see me. So the next time you see me here, you have a little bit of understanding. I'll, ex I'll explain about the farm and, you know, everyday life, what we're doing anyway, as we're doing it. But it is so much, you know, I farm it so much down to, like, real life. You know, like I said, I won't find shortcuts. I mean, it's like the machinery we got. I don't use machinery bigger than six meters. I don't go in a 30-acre field and try to find a 30-foot or 50-foot cultivator. No, I still work it with a six-meter um, cultivator. We don't... we. We really don't. We don't. Uh, we don't try to, to rush. You know, even though I've got a lot to do, and half the time I don't get it all done. But it doesn't. Get, it doesn't justify me getting oversized machinery. It, it really doesn't. I really don't. I. I think, like I say, the biggest cultivator we got. I think that one at the top, home farm that you saw, spring harrows. <coughs> The one I I said you can't jump over the hedge that near that one, I think that's eight meters that one, but that is the biggest we got. But I can justify that because it's light, it's big and it's light. And then, but it is what the job it does, as well. I you know, I know about cultivators and um, think oh, I was going to say finger mower, not finger mower, power hours. But, you know, cultivators, power harrows, disc harrows. You know, we're disc a field. We roll. You know, we disc. We use spring tines. Some, some of my language may not be. Um, what do you say? Like they, you know, some people say, "Oh, that's a cultivator," and I might call it um, spring tine. Uh, sp um, spring tine cult. Yeah, we spring tines, spring arrows. That's the word I was looking for. I wouldn't say cultivator. Never have done. Something like that, I wouldn't call that. It is. It does cultivate the land, but I call it harrows. It's a spring tine harrow, or rigid tine. There's ridge tines. There's spring tines. There's drags. We, we call drags. Cambridge rollers. You've heard of them, but that's used for corn at the you know you plant the corn and then you go along with a Cambridge roller you wouldn't use a flat roller on corn but you use a Cambridge roller and they ridge it, they they push push down and ridge up that's why they're grooved the way they are if you look at you know they're like it's like a it's like a miniature field, of, you know, like when you plant potatoes, you've got the potato banks. That's what um, Cambridge Roller does. But we use all that. We, we try to f farm the, well, not the proper way, but the way I know. I said it. I see I'm yapping again, see. I said I have to shut up. I don't shut up. Like I said, I'll be here to... To Christmas and still be talking and, and what that's time now it's quarter to five been here a good half an hour or more and I say a farmer a farmer ain't got much to say but when you get him talking you, you shut him up especially me anyway uh, I sort of say this is sort of like mum and dad's place they're here, and I'm over there. That's the sort of way I'm thinking, you know. So we keep keep this place going. That's like I said. I'm up at home farm. They're up at top farm. This is a proper old farm. Ah, right, I'm gonna shut up before before I'm gonna be here, and then it is be summertime, isn't it? Right. I'd like to say thanks for watching. And take care.